the World Ends With You sequel demo came out this month. And the full game comes out July 27th, which is actually in a few weeks. So, yeah. Well, can you believe we're halfway through the year? We have survived a pandemic last year, and now we're getting ready for a sequel to one of the greatest sport in games ever, The World Ends With You, with Neo, The World Ends With You. And I know what y'all is about to say. I will late. I actually wanted to reach the level cap of both the Switch version and the PS4 version, trying to get Ren and his crew all the way to at least level 10, which is actually the level cap for the demo. But, then the holidays popped up with the 4th of July, and I had to help set up everything for that, because we hosted it here, so I had a lot to do. What you gonna do, man? When life gets in the way, that's how it is. So, without further ado, I do want to give my first impressions on the demo. I won't really get into the story or anything like that, because I feel like that would be spoiling me a lot of stuff. Like, there's a lot of plot points in the story de demo that are kind of important that will come from us later. But let me get my first impressions of Neo The World, and we'll see you. Gameplay. The gameplay is a massive improvement and a brave new step for the world in the It is a new era for these type of games and I love it. While being very action based, it still uses the pin system, but it feels a lot more natural here as whatever pin is assigned to a certain character, they do the attack. Also, certain pins can only go to certain characters, meaning that they each have their own special uniqueness. But then you can also combine pins, you can upgrade pins, and level them up, turning them into better pins. Like, they give you better abilities, some actually give you more abilities, and actually a lot of them have status elements that can, you know, damage enemies. From what we got to play, which were the first two hours of the game, is you're competing in a Reaper game as usual, with various teams, which I feel like will be boss battles later on in the full game, but you really get to see them shine on. And you'll be able to have six players fighting on the field at once, though in the demo we only have three. I actually enjoy that, because again, I like that they're sort of upping up how the party systems work in Square Enix game. You gotta remember, in Kingdom Hearts 3, you can only have three characters. Now we can have the whole party in there. You will be able to traverse the Shibuya in a large 3D landscape similar to that of Persona or any real Japanese game where you got to go around Shibuya, but it's a lot more free. Sometimes Reapers will actually block off areas until you do certain tasks for them, and you will be able to do these tasks, and they will open up the area so you can go and check it out. Also, eating ramen and all that stuff still gives you status It didn't let you change your clothes or see what you can do, which I was honestly kind of disappointed in, but I hope you do get to do that in the future. Each party member has their own psych ability, which I think is super awesome. Rin can change people's minds through dialogue, and Fred can actually do this really painful and frustrating minigame, help people remember images and stuff so you can find out more information on things. This is pretty much what we got to play most of the game, because the game really gets to play like two hours of it. But yeah, also the level cap again is level 10, which is a pretty big level. You did get to fight at least three or four bosses, and you will need to level up. Otherwise, you will be destroyed. And your team all shares the health, so one person gets hit a lot and takes a lot of damage, the whole team does. But let's get on to the next step in this game. Morning rays, hairspring queens get on their way to the nest. The West, honest, they once had a dream. Bells of society, shells of the unity, cornets and spinners. The sound flows, follow their home, dragged by the power of the dreams. That power is yet unknown. First of all, this game looks gorgeous. I, I know, it just looks fucking gorgeous. I know this is the story portion, but the reason I was so engaged in the story is that I love how the comic booky and manga looking this game is it's like they really knew how to draw the attention it looks like it could be a modern day jet set radio which honestly that feels like what this game is and the story plays really different than the first game the character's life is kind of left ambiguous in the first game well nah Rin's life isn't really left as ambiguous as the protagonist he has a pretty boring life 
him and his friends are super into ARG games, like in what we would think of like Pokemon Go or whatever. Well, they have it called Monster Go or something like that. And Ren is actually more kind and outgoing to Neku. He's definitely a lot more less rude and is a lot more dealing with people. He doesn't mind them as much as Neku did, whereas Neku was more closed off. You know, Ren kind of goes for the flow. He's definitely a protagonist that I really do like seeing. And I feel like I can gel with him because he, he has a personality that, you know, he, he's chill as fuck, man. I've never said this about a video game character, but he chill as fuck. Of course he has Fret with him. He's Fret a definitely, he reminds me of Yosuke from Persona 4, but he's definitely his own character. He is funny, he's humorous, he's the sort of side character you want to see in a game like this. Shit, even when Shu makes his return to the game, he him and the characters mesh well, because while he says he doesn't want to help them, he's always had their back, and I really do like that. And we're just seeing this from the first two hours of the game. They they really know how to sell you on these characters. Shit, we didn't even know if these characters actually age. Because we didn't know Neku's actual age, unless you looked inside the book. You know, the pamphlet with the manual. But we know that Ren and his friends are like teenagers, they're just kids. So when they get trapped into the game, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They even have a lame first name, which again, I'm not gonna spoil anything. You guys can play the demo, okay? Not gonna hurt you. And plus, I'm not gonna lie. Square, in my opinion, never really had super great dialogue. Especially like with Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy, it's always been kinda awkward. Even with the first world of the it had its moments. But they have been on the road with how they've been handling how these characters speak to each other. They speak like modern teenagers and young adults. And that's what the world in the has always prides themselves off of. These characters are meant to be in a more realistic setting. Shibuya is a real city. You gotta talk like you talk. And like, yeah, char I know it might come off as cringy in some games, but no, it belongs here. Because trust me, People are saying lit. People are saying that's cool. People are typing WTF. Trust me, we all do it. Don't fucking act like you haven't done it. I, I know, I know you. I, I've met you before. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it on the story part. I don't want to spoil anything. I would rather you guys go play the demo for yourself. Times I forget the belly. Stole up the friend who stole me. Straight up the book is shown. Overall, Neo, or I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna call it Neo, which is what I'm calling it for now, is the perfect sequel to the series. It improves on things the original wanted to do, but was limited by hardware, and pretty much, even when they upgraded it, they were stuck with that same type of playstyle. So it pretty much upgraded everything and let you see what they were going for. And the great thing is, I'm only speaking on a demo, meaning we only saw a slither of what the game can offer. The combat system is greatly changed, and the pin system is amazing. I can't wait to see what the full game can offer with upgrades, new abilities, and all sorts of things. I suggest you guys go give the demo a playthrough. It's still available, it's not limited or timed, and it lets you decide if I want to try out the game. It's available on Nintendo Switch and on the PS4. Um, So yeah, let your heart be your guiding key. You guys are awesome. I won't be taking long breaks. I'm going to do what I've always set out to do with any channel, with everything I've done, which is make dope shit, make cool shit, and I'm back. But anyhow, see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to follow my Twitch if you want to see me play The World Ends with you. If you want to come to the JIT chatting streams, I play pretty much anything, and then I talk to you guys. Have mental, mental health updates. You guys know mental health is important. But yeah, let your heart be your guiding key. See you guys next time. Peace. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get a lot of money. I'm not going to be able to get a lot of money.